Alright, so I saw All Eyes on Me, you know, the highly anticipated Tupac biopic, and yeah, we've been waiting for a Tupac movie for so fucking long, and honestly, I don't even really know where to start. I... I was just not impressed. Like, I didn't really have super high expectations for this movie. Like, a few years ago when I heard that they were making this movie, I was hella excited. But as I started to see, like, more and more stuff about the movie come out, I wasn't really sold all that much on the trailers. But of course, I had to go and see it anyways. Granted, telling Tupac's story in, like, two and a half hours is nearly impossible. And, you know, Tupac was such a complex individual who died so young. But this is where your art and talent and skill as a writer or producer or whatever is supposed to come through so honestly you don't get a pass for it being difficult so I'm gonna get into the details about what's right and what's wrong about this film in a minute but just to get straight to it I don't think this film was terrible it's not amazing it's not up there with like notorious or straight out of Compton um, I mean but it is better than Aaliyah's biopic which I mean that doesn't really say that much because that shit was trash I couldn't even finish that and it seems like people's review about this movie is kind of split down the middle like some people thought it was really good some people thought it was trash although I'm not really happy happy with this movie, I wouldn't quite say that it was trash. Pac has a complex story and they told that story and they had an actor that looks almost identical to Pac. Like that's what made it so enjoyable to watch and so entertaining but like that's it. That's pretty much the only good thing about this movie. So basically what I'm saying is it's flawed but it's still worth seeing especially if you're a Tupac fan. But I do think Pac deserves better. I think his fans deserve better and I'm gonna tell you why. Let's start with the positive. The best thing about this movie is the fact that the actor looks so much like Pac, like almost identical. Well, he's like the android version of Pac, but you pretty much couldn't get any closer than that. And yeah, his performance was cool. You could tell he like really studied Pac and his mannerisms, the way he talked, the way he dips every time he makes a point, but it wasn't quite there for me. Like he didn't really have that like charisma and charm that Tupac has, but it was still, it was pretty good. It was definitely better than the Tupac from Notorious. Like I hated Tupac's character in that movie. I hated the way they portrayed him. So. He definitely did better than that. I really loved Afini Shakur's performance. I think she did an amazing job playing Tupac's mom. Like literally the first scene when she comes out of the courthouse and she gives her speech after winning her Panther 21 trial. I swear, like she gave me goosebumps. Like you know that feeling when you hear a really good singer and your skin kind of tingles a little bit? Like yes, she killed that role. She did so good. Kat Graham, in the beginning she wasn't really selling Jada to me. Like it wasn't that she was a bad actress or anything, but it's like we've been watching Jada for a long ass time like from a different world to set it off like we feel like we know Jada I didn't really get Jada vibes from her until like later on in the movie and it wasn't until the scene where she's like arguing with Tupac backstage about you know how he's kind of kind of fucking up and falling apart or whatever and she was giving me like real Jada vibes like I was like yo this this is Jada right here. Unfortunately, Jada went on Twitter and was like, yeah, that never happened. I never argued with Pog backstage. Whoop de woo de woo. I get why they put that scene in for dramatic effects, so I'm not mad at it. What else? What else? Um, Considering the complexity of Tupac's life and having to condense so much in such a short amount of time, I think they did a pretty cool job of showing us his timeline and his series of events, how his upbringing and being the child of a Black Panther kind of molded his worldviews and his mentality, showing us the roadblocks that he faced throughout his career and his life. So I think they did a good job of telling the story and getting that information out there so that we actually like know who Tupac is. So now let me tell you what's wrong with this film. First off, and this is my biggest issue with the whole movie, they did not by any means show how big Tupac actually was. Not just to hip hop, but to the whole culture, to the world. Like Tupac is a legend. In Straight Outta Compton and in Notorious, you see the impact impact that their music made. You see in Notorious how the people embraced Biggie and how he changed the game. You see in Straight Outta Compton how people reacted to N.W.A. and Fuck the Police and how the people embraced them and defended them. The reason these people have biopics isn't just to tell their story. They made change. Like they helped create the culture. They influenced generations of people and will continue to do so for who knows how long. You don't get that from this movie. You don't get that vibe. Like you don't see how Pac influenced 
anybody in this movie. All they did was tell his story. They showed his ups, they showed his downs. That's about it. And that's my biggest issue with this movie. How do you make a movie about Tupac, a man that literally every rapper out compares themselves to or makes a reference to? Like, you can't have a conversation about hip-hop without mentioning Tupac. He is one of the most influential hip-hop artists ever. Arguably the most influential hip-hop artist ever and most likely the most referenced hip-hop artist ever. Like, this just felt like a story about a black man struggling to succeed against the system. If you're not a Pac fan or don't know much about Pac or for future people who see this movie who don't even know who Pac is, you're not gonna know that he's one of the most influential musicians ever from this movie. So because of that, this movie fails. Whew, okay. I'm glad I got that off my chest. All right, so the other things that were wrong about this movie. Now, I said that I liked that they told her story, that it was thorough, and they put out all the information that we needed, but I did not like how they told his story. I thought it was incredibly lazy. They have him in prison doing this interview with Hill Harper. They use the interview as like a framing device for narrating the story, and that's cool and all. It's not like this is a new tactic. Like, movies have told stories like this before, but the reason why I say this is lazy kind of goes back to my other point that they didn't really show how influential Tupac was. They have these super literal lines in the movie that say Pac is an influence to the youth, Pac is a black leader, Pac is a threat to the white power structure, and they even have a scene of like the vice president or something talking about Tupac on TV, but I feel like they use these like super specific descriptions of Pac in the movie as a scapegoat for not being able to actually show us. Pac wasn't all these things because he's saying I get around, like why can't you show us why he's all these things that you're telling us he is. We should be able to see it on our own. The movie should be able to speak for itself. Maybe they didn't know how, maybe they couldn't, and so they used this form of narrating to do just that, but it didn't work for me. The next thing I didn't like about this movie is I think they focus way too much on the negative aspects of his life. We know Tupac is a controversial individual. No need to downplay that, like you don't have to sugarcoat it, that's fine. But I think they spent so much time focusing on the negative stuff, his financial issues, his legal issues, the rape charge, all of that, that it takes away from his legacy. And that's probably why they couldn't really show how influential he was. They focused so much on the negative and I think he deserved better than how they portrayed his his whole career. Another thing that kind of threw me off was conflicting characters. I think it's super cool that because NWA and um, Biggie already had their movies, it's cool to see how all the stories kind of tie in together, but in some cases, it got kind of muddy, which is understandable because they're showing their side of the story, so they're not here to show straight out of Compton or Notorious. I think Dr. Dre's story was a little underwritten and Snoop's was a little overwritten, and I get it because it's straight out of Compton they don't want to give too much to Dr. Dre I just think they needed to balance out those like supporting characters a little bit more but I have to say the actor who played Snoop like his voice sounded so much like Snoop Dogg it was almost creepy like I thought Snoop did a voiceover or something like it was so on point the most obvious one was Biggie the Biggie in this movie completely threw me off they used the same exact character who played Biggie and Notorious which is fine because you know it makes it easier to connect with but he was completely different than Biggie in Notorious. Same actor but in this movie Biggie was like super quiet, he didn't show any facial expressions, he didn't show any emotion, he was low-key creepy, he would just pop up whenever and obviously they're showing a different side of the same story and they're showing their version of Biggie which is fine but I feel like if you're gonna do that don't use the same actor because now like it's it just conflicts with the other movie and now like, this just might be my bias talking because I'm from California like I'm from Oakland I grew up listening to Tupac like they play Tupac every day on the radio if you listen to 106 they did not show no type of love for the West Coast. They did not show no type of California love. Like, that shit really threw me off. Of course, they say West Side in the music and they play like California, no side pod. But other than that, like, they did not show how much Pac really loved the West Coast, how he yelled West Side like everywhere he went. Not once in the movie, other than in the actual songs, does Tupac say West Side? Does he mention that he loves California? Yes, we know Pac was born in New York and he was a transplant and blah blah blah. In interviews, Pac literally says Cali raised him, West Side raised him, Oakland raised him. They did not show no type of love and I felt some type of way about that, but whatever. 
whatever. But speaking of Oakland, all right, so this is something probably only people from the Bay Area would notice, but they were showing shots of Oakland in the Bay Area, right? And it literally says at the bottom of the screen, Oakland 1991 or something like that. Yet yeah, they show a shot of the brand new Bay Bridge that just got opened up like two years ago or something like come on but you telling me you couldn't edit that out or you couldn't find a shot somewhere of the bay bridge before they rebuilt it like really i'm not gonna judge your budget and your special effects team but i mean in x-men they literally picked up the golden gate bridge and moved it to alcatraz island you tell me you couldn't just wipe that out Okay, I saw this other meme going around that kind of got co-signed by 50 Cent saying that there was a scene where, where they took a picture with the iPhone. I don't remember that, but if you go and watch this movie after this review, try to pay attention to the scene where he takes a picture with Faith Evans. Tell me if that was the iPhone that they used, because if they did, y'all can't be slipping up like that. Alright, so the last thing I'm gonna say that I didn't like about this movie was the music, which sounds really, really weird to say. I think that they were really lazy with the music in this movie. Like, they only show a few shots of him actually performing. They were really short. Even the scenes where he's like in the studio, he does like three songs back to back. They were like super smushed together and I feel like they had to condense all the music scenes and make them super short again because they focus so much on all the negative stuff going on in his life that they couldn't even focus on the music and the importance of the music but whatever and it's not just that how they scored the music was just not good when it was his music playing it just seemed like background music like this is the music that's gonna be on the soundtrack it doesn't give you the feel like this is his music that he's putting out into the world and then for the music that wasn't his that played it just didn't work for me it seemed really out of place like the death scene like the death scene was so good until that fucking gospel music started playing and i don't have anything against gospel music it was just over overbearing and overwhelming it just didn't work for me I did not like the way they used the music in this yeah. movie that's my thoughts on this movie again I don't think it was terrible despite all the shit I had to say about it this movie definitely needed to be made pop Ben needed a biopic I just think it was a high quality made for TV movie it was definitely flawed but I still think it's worth seeing I probably would see this movie again wouldn't pay to see it again but I would watch it again overall I would rate this movie doing it out of five I would probably give this movie like a two maybe 2.5 out of five so tell me what you guys think about the movie did you like it didn't you like it do you agree with the things I said about this movie let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to like comment and subscribe yes